It's kind of funny. I don't get intimidated very easily these days, but I'm going to be trying to replace my AC system at my house. And I do find this intimidating. However, I'm going to be going with a Mr. Cool unit and I've worked with them for many years now in their mini split line. I've installed like four of their units, but they say it's DIYable and it is. And so therefore I am trusting them to make this system just as easy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the process, replace my condenser, replace my air handler, replace the line set, and then uh, whatever I learn, I'm going to pass it on to you guys so that if you have an AC unit on the fritz, like what I do, you'll be able to do a DIY install should you feel uh, up to the task. So let's get into it. The first thing to know, if you have a conventional AC system, if there's three main components that you're gonna continuously hear me reference in this video. There's gonna be the condenser, which is gonna be outside of the house. There's going to be the air handler, which is gonna be inside the house. And then there's gonna be the line set, which connects the two. Now, the condenser should be very easy to find. It's the big box thing with the fan on it somewhere outside. Uh, but depending if you're in the north or the south, will determine kind of where in the house your air handler is gonna be. Most of the time in Texas, ours are in the attic, but it could be in a closet. If you're up north and you are lucky enough to have basements, they might be in the basement. By code, every single one has a disconnect box by the unit. So go find the condenser, the outside unit, and find the breaker for it, turn it off, which is mine's inside the house. Then you have a disconnect box here uh, to the unit. And just to be double, double safe, you can pull the disconnect just to be double, double safe that everything is off because then the first step is gonna to be to disconnect the line set and the electrical components to the condenser. Now moving down here, these lines are charged with something called refrigerant. And the way that you get rid of that is you call an HVAC guy and they will come out and capture it. And then that way it doesn't go and uh, get into the atmosphere. Now that I've already done that, I can go through and just start disconnecting these lines, which is the line set as well as the electrical. I'm just double checking that it is indeed off. This is the third check. So yes, it is. This part's kind of easy. If everything's disconnected, it's just a bunch of twisting, twisting off and yanking out. Oh yeah, that copper is super easy to cut. Now, you're only cutting the line set. Don't cut the high voltage or the low voltage. Anything electrical, don't cut. Only the line set. Now that this is all disconnected, I think the normal thing next would be to move this out of the way so that you can put your new condenser on the same pad site. However, I'm going with a, a different unit, this one here, and it has a slightly longer footprint and I would need to remake that pad. And I also have plans for this entire area. So I've decided to move my condenser to this area of my porch instead. I kind of geek out on new technology, so I can actually be a little long-winded here, but I'm going to try to consolidate this into four points on why I like this unit over that one. First, small footprint. Absolutely love things condensed down. Second is the vertical nature. On those horizontal units, you have to worry about leaves and in the northern climate, snow collecting on top. The vertical completely eliminates that. Third, let's just pause and listen. You hear the birds, you hear the leaves. It's really important to me to be able to hear those things. This unit is extremely loud. This is gonna be half as loud. And then finally, the fourth is this new technology. Well, at least to me, it's new to me. This is a heat pump, which means that during the summer, it's gonna operate the same as my old units where it's gonna expel all heat found in the air outside of the house. But during winter, it's gonna steal heat from the air and then put it into my house, making it ultra efficient and I should be able to see major cost savings. Now, typically heat pumps are known for not working very well whenever it gets to temperatures near freezing. We don't have to worry about that too often here in Texas, but I know that you Northerners do. So know that this Mr. Cool heat pump unit is uh, rated for negative 22 degrees. So even people in North Dakota and Minnesota should be able to use this. All right, let's go up to the attic and see about getting the air handler moved to the next stages. Now I'm in my attic and looking, this is my air return line. Uh, my filters are placed here. All of that's gonna stay. From here to here is the actual air handler uh, system that I'm gonna be replacing. Here's the line set that comes in. So again, I'm just gonna cut those off. Uh, this is a condensate line. So inside here is uh, coils and they're just like a cold beverage to where it's gonna sweat and drip water. All of that goes into the drip pan and then it gets into this line and goes out. 
So this is not actually put together to where I can unscrew it. So I'm just gonna cut this line off. And then my electrical is behind this panel. I again found the breaker, which is probably gonna be separate from the condenser in your case. It was in my case and I flipped it for this unit. So I'm gonna unscrew the panel. I'm gonna check the wires to make sure that it is disconnected. And then I'm gonna disconnect those as well. Okay. I can't pull out the main high voltage line because all of this low voltage, which actually goes to the thermostat is uh, binding it up. So I'm just gonna unscrew all of these wire nuts and disconnect this low voltage. Another thing that I disconnected was the float on my drain pan down here. Um, and this is just so that if this pan over floods with water, then it will kick off the system, which by the way, if you're going to be working on your AC, mine used to not have this, this overfilled flooded my attic, causing a bunch of drywall issues downstairs. So if you're going to be looking at this any anyways, make sure that your pan has a float and that it's actually hooked up. All right. Now that I have all of these disconnected, I should be able to pull out this high voltage line. Perfect. All right, with that done, I now should be able to cut the condensation line and the line set. Check your condensation line because it might be set up to where it can be backed off. My people just glued it in place. I'm just going to cut it. So this is the condensate. This is line set. And then we have all electrical now disassembled. Um, looking here, I have something called ductboard, which is fiberglass. A different thing that m you might have is metal that's fastened together with screws. But the general concept here is that I need to get the air handler separated from my ductwork. And so in my case, it looks like I'm going to be able to do that by simply pulling this taping off. Um, over here, it looks like I have a few screws. That's also a simple simple thing to undo. Now this is where my filters are. I want to keep that. And I'm just going to rip up this tape and see if that'll allow this unit to come free. Oh yeah, feel free. Okay, how am I going to get this out of the attic? I guess that way. So what I'm going to do to give myself a little bit more working space is I cut both the line set one, the line set's gonna go away, but the condensate I'm actually gonna have to reinstall, but I will cut it back here just to give myself more working space over there. And I'll add a coupler later on. Let's try to wrestle this thing out of place. Now that I am to this little platform, hopefully you have more space. I'm gonna disassemble this because they're, it won't fit through there. So I'm gonna have to take it down in pieces. This is my air return. This is my filter box. And that's the rest of my duct work. So now I need to get the new air handler in this little section. Just like I couldn't get my old unit down in one piece, I also couldn't get my new unit up in one piece. You won't have this issue if yours isn't in the attic. Everything was easy to take apart and get up except the piece called the A coil. It is a very tight fit in, in between here. So I called in uh, reinforcements in order to help me get it up here. Jacob's gonna bring it in, pass it to Gary. They're gonna try to walk it up the ladder, pass it up to me. If we need to take these off, then we'll do that. If I need to take this jam off, we can do that. Okay. Do you wanna try to shimmy the valves up first, like what you said, like angle it? It won't fit through here. Uh, one option is that we could take out the jam, but then we have to pull the ladder, no. Option two, I have been wanting an access panel to my roof so that I could stargaze. So I feel like it's a really great time to cut in a panel. Then I'll be able to get the A coil into my attic and then have my stargazing platform. Two for one. Let's cut a hole in the wall. Let's go. Be impressive.
cut a hole in your attic. You could just be a normal person and remove the door jam, but I am not normal. Instead, I look forward to building an exterior door to my roof. All right, so this is the reassembled air handler. So to give you reference, this is that A-coil. Uh, this is the motor, and then just how to make a few connections. Now, you need to work it over there where the old one was without tearing up any of my ducting. <laughs> Talk about making me feel powerful. My goodness. Now that the air handler is in place in the attic, I need to connect it to the condenser down here. The underside of that porch roof is actually the attic that I'm gonna cut a hole in and then chase the line set down the side of the house to the new condenser. All right, line set. Air handler is in the attic right above us. I'm gonna drill a hole to run the line set from up to down where the condenser is. I'm gonna take a Sawzall and cut this trim so that I have a flat uh, pathway for the line set. And then I'm gonna use a hole saw in order to drill two holes. All right, now it is time to connect the two units, the air handler to the condenser outside. I'm starting off with a larger line set and I just set the coil there. This is where that hole exits out. So I'm gonna be running it down there. Now I'm actually gonna ask somebody to feed this down to me. I'm gonna run downstairs and be chasing it all the way down to the condenser. And then after running this one, I'm gonna come back with the smaller heat pump side and do the exact same thing. So I'm not worried about running it on the side of my house because they make these uh, attachments that I'm gonna attach this, run the line set on front of it, and then there's this cover that will cover it up. And then I'll paint this to match the house or I'll just leave it since it matches the trim. Do that one more time with the small line. All right, to make these connections, one of the biggest unique factors of Mr. Cool is that their lines, their line set is pre-charged so that you don't need special equipment to pressurize it and to charge the line or to have to have a professional come out. With that, there is like some special valves in these that doesn't release it uh, until you have it hooked up. So this actually goes down here. In order to make the connections, they ship with the fittings. I'm gonna hook up the big one first, taking out the thread protectors that comes with the unit. Okay, that's the end point. So now I can rinse and repeat on the other end. All right, final step on this. Now that I have these connected and tightened down, the A-coil comes pre-charged, the line set comes pre-charged. There is a screw valve in both of these fittings that separates the two. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the flood I mean, open up the dam. It's just a little screw valve in there. Okay, sounds fully backed up. Okay. <laughs> that sounds like success. Everything in the attic is now done. All of the wiring, um, it's taken most of the day. Really, the thermostat wiring is just a little bit tricky. So now I have the outside main power wiring to this condenser, and this whole project is gonna be a wrap. Okay, so now we can fast forward. I've made all of my connections. The line set here, you can see that it comes with this insulation for the very bottom. And then I just used some foil tape in order to connect the two. I also hooked up the main powers going from my uh, pre-existing power box over here. Now, if you're gonna be doing one of these projects, it's inevitable that you're gonna have a hole in your house somewhere that you need to fill. And what I like to use is this barrier by DAP. It's a multi-project foam. The thing that sets the DAP one apart is that rats and mice won't chew through this. 
Okay, let's go up to the attic. Now, after getting the new air handler in the position of the old one, then it was just a matter of connecting everything. Let's go through component at a time. The wiring, I took photos before taking it apart so that I could just make the same connections. I did uh, make sure that I wired in my float to the low voltage and my thermostat is there. Working over this way, the line set connected the exact same way as I connected the line set downstairs. Then I just put on the insulation. Going down to the condensate line, this is something interesting that an AC friend told me to do. I've had my attic flood before and it's because this gets, the condensate line gets clogged and backs up. And then what happens is typically the bottom of the case floods and then it starts overflowing into this pan. When that happens, this float is supposed to kick on and then shut the entire system off. My previous float was not ever wired in. It was on the pan, but not wired in. So that's why it's important to have the float and make sure that it's working properly. But my AC friend said, throw in a second line so that you can see here, it's just a, a one that empties directly into the pan. So that way, if the first condensate line backs up or clogs or isn't working for some reason, instead of having to flood the bottom side of the air handler first before going to the pan, the second line will just automatically start working. Now moving over to connecting the air handler to the previous ductwork. One thing that I ran into is you can see my new air handler is much more tall than my previous unit. This one used to connect just right here where this filter box is. The most important thing about this connection is that you have an airtight seal. What I had to do is create a sheet metal cap, if you will, to block off the additional height that my new unit has over my previous. So that's what this is. And then you can see I just secured it with some screws along the top in this front face. Now, the important thing is to go back and again, make an airtight. There's two methods that I think that uh, are on the market. One is a foil tape, which is just a peel and stick method. The other one is this, so it's a brush on air seal to where you can go to the big box store. So just know that whenever you reconnect this joint, you can see I've already started. So I'll come back here and seal up this joint here and then also this joint. Okay, all in all guys, it has taken me three days to complete this project, which I, I accounted for. I didn't wanna be rushed when doing this. I wanted to be able to take my time. So I waited until a time of year that I could shut off my AC for three days and just really focus on this job. Now, if you're tackling this, know that if you get one of these kits and are willing to go through the obstacles and uh, each small step that <laughs> accumulates into the big accomplishment, it will save you thousands of dollars. And I don't think it gets much easier than the kit that Mr. Cool has put together for you. Each individual thing is very simple. Connecting the line set, doing the simple plumbing for the condensate line, uh, connecting the old air handler to the existing. If anything holds you up, know that you could still save yourself thousands of dollars by tackling the vast majority of this job and then call in an HVAC guy to do the odds and ends, such as the thermostat wiring, which is pretty tricky, um, in order to completely wrap it up for you. So I really hope that this video has helped you out should you be considering this job and I'll see you on whatever I'm tackling next. Oh, and if you're worried about the hole in my attic, that's going to be a different project.